Hi friend, if you're serious about programming PLC applications, then you should be serious about designing HMI applications as well, because PLC and HMI applications go hand in hand. The PLC application is kind of the back end of your machine or your production line, is the part that the operators don't get to see, where the HMI is the front end of your application, is the part that operators interact with to control their machine or production line. Now, HMI applications consist of different screens where each screen typically will display some text and a collection of interactive objects like buttons, parameter input fields, recipe views, alarm views, etc. Now, most of these objects, buttons, icons, pumps, valves, etc., they require graphics, and this is the main topic of today's video. When it comes to HMI graphics, you can decide to go with the default graphics that come predefined with the automation software that you're using, like for example, TIA Portal or Rockwell. But in my experience, these pre-installed graphics are kind of dull, like they're very basic and they will not give your HMI design that spark that will make it look crisp and modern. So that's why I've been creating my own custom designed HMI graphics for the last 10 years now. And my go-to design tool, the one tool that I use for creating custom HMI graphics is called Figma. In today's video, I'm going to guide you through the exact steps that I take to create crisp and modern looking buttons and button icons for my own HMI applications. The examples that I will be sharing with you today are taken directly from my popular TIA Portal All Basics Pack training bundle, which is all about creating structured PLC and HMI applications in TIA Portal. Now, if you like to become a structured PLC programmer, level up, which I really think you should, then I got a special gift for you today. I created a downloadable five-step guide, five simple steps, that if you apply them to your own applications, they will drastically improve the structure of your PLC programs. So if this sounds like something that you could use, then go and check out the description below this video for a link to that free guide. All right, let's start designing HMI graphics. As I mentioned in the introduction, the software that I use to create my custom HMI graphics is called Figma. But what exactly is Figma and why do I think it's so good? In short, Figma is a cloud-based design tool for creating vector graphics. The reason I'm so excited and passionate about Figma and why I always recommend it to my own students and to people following me on social media are as follows. First off, the designs, the graphics that you create in Figma are vector-based. This means that you can easily scale them, change the color, change the shape, add instances to them, etc. They are not baked graphics like raster graphics. You can simply create buttons, icons, process objects, and you can scale them to any size without loss of quality, without pixelation or any sort of artifacts. Now that's just awesome and that makes Figma extremely appealing for creating HMI graphics. HMI panels come in different sizes with different resolutions, so the possibility to scale your buttons is extremely attractive. Figma delivers in spades here. Secondly, Figma is cloud-based. You can basically run Figma straight from your web browser without any install, or you can download the app and run it directly from your desktop. Whichever option you choose, all your designs will be in the cloud. So no need to save anything, it's all automatically saved, and no need for hard disk space. So to recap, Figma is just so feature-rich, user-friendly and effortless to work with. It's just a really awesome package and one of my favorite tools. So now that you know what Figma is capable of, let's get you started with Figma. To get started with Figma, you first want to go to www.figma.com. Okay, so here we are at the Figma homepage. Let's have a quick look at the pricing. So there's one free option, which is the starter plan. And that's the one we're going to take. I've been using this free version for over five years and I was never held back by any lack of features. All features for creating and exporting amazing HMI graphics are possible with this free version. So we can either select the get started for free here in the top right corner, or we scroll down the starter plan and select choose starter. Now just add your email, create a password, and press create account. 
In the last step, you'll need to activate your account by checking the email that has been sent to your inbox. Once you click the link in that email, you are taken to the Figma welcome screen. Here you need to tell a little bit about yourself, your name, your type of work, how you will use Figma, etc. There's no need to go through all of this, so you're free to skip these steps. Finally, you need to select your plan again, and as mentioned before, we are going with the free starter plan. Okay, so now we can start designing using either a preset or a template. For my HMI graphics, I always start with a blank page, so no thank you Figma, I'll get started on my own. Now this takes us to the main Figma page. This is the first page you'll see each time you start up Figma from your web browser or from your Figma app. By the way, if you want to get the app, and I really recommend you do this if you're planning to work with Figma on a regular basis, just go to your username in the top left corner and select Get Desktop App. Please do this step, install the app, and it will save you lots of time by having direct access to Figma straight from your desktop. After you've installed the app, open it from your desktop, log in if necessary, and we're right back at our start screen. Before we can start designing any HMI graphics, we first need to create a new design file. And we do that right here. This will be like our canvas on which we will add our designs, our buttons, our process objects, etc. All right, so here we are in our design file. At the moment, the name of our file is untitled. Let's start by renaming this to something more meaningful, like for example, HMI graphics. In this design file, we can create different pages. You access those pages right here on the left side of the screen. Let's rename this page to Buttons. And let's add another page for Process Objects. So these pages are kind of like folders in your design file that let you structure your graphics into different categories. The way I use design files and pages is that I typically start a new design file for each project, for each machine or line, and then I use the pages to categorize, to organize the different types of graphics for that specific machine or line. Another thing I typically do is that I change the color of the page. I do this to create more contrast between my designs and the background. If I'm creating darker buttons, I will have a lighter page background, and if I create light color buttons, I will darken the page background. Just to be clear, this background will not be exported, so it really doesn't matter what you choose here. It should be a background color, a canvas color that you like working on and is easy on your eyes. To change the page background, simply click on the page background color here on the right side and select a different background color. There we go. Now we're all set to start creating graphics. Let's go. All right, so today we are going to create some HMI buttons and icons for those buttons. The first set of buttons which we are going to create are these screen buttons right here. These buttons are taken from my premium sample application and they are used to indicate which screen is active on the HMI. The white icon color means the screen is not active the blue icon color means the screen is active. If you'd like more information about my premium application, which is part of the premium edition of my TIA Portal All Basics Pack training bundle, then go and check out the description below this video. We are going to create two sets of buttons here. One set for an alarm screen and the second set for a recipe screen. We'll design these buttons in three steps. First, we're going to create the button background. Then we'll create the icon for the button. And finally, we are going to combine button background and button icon into one scalable button object. So let's start with the button background. We do this by selecting the rectangle shape right here in the menu bar. 
And now we simply draw a rectangle onto our page. This button will be 136 pixels wide and 120 pixels in height, so we change that size here on the right side. Now for the background color, we can either manually select a fill color right here, or we can directly type in the hex code for the color. Now you might be thinking, how does he know this hex code by heart? I don't, I just simply wrote down this hex code beforehand. Finally, let's rename this rectangle here on the left side to button background. That was step one. In step two, we're going to create the icon for the button. Let's start with the alarm icon. So the alarm icon is basically a triangle with an exclamation mark in the middle. This icon design will consist of different individual shapes. So we will first draw the individual parts and then we will simply group them together. So we start by creating a triangle and we do that by selecting a polygon shape first and then draw a triangle somewhere on the page. Now here's a little trick you can use. If you hold down the shift key and left click and hold any of the sides of the triangle, you can scale the triangle while keeping the proportions constant. If you pull the edge without using the shift key, the triangle simply scales in the direction you're pulling. Let's scale this triangle to 86 pixels times 100 pixels. For the fill color, we're going to go with just plain white. Finally, I'd like the corners of the triangle to be rounded off. And we do that right here by setting a value for the corner radius. So that's our triangle. Let's move on to the exclamation mark now. So you could use a text field for that, which you find right here in the menu. But the problem with the text field is that it does not scale so easily. You can only scale text in Figma by changing the font size. And we would like our icons to be scaled easily by just pulling the sides of the design. More on that later on. So instead of using a text object, I'm going to create the exclamation sign using vector graphics. First, I'll zoom in a bit on the triangle, which you do by holding down the control key and moving the mouse wheel up or down. The exclamation mark consists of a circle with a rectangular shape on top of it. So we first draw the circle. Again, remember to hold down the shift key when scaling the object in order to maintain the dimensions. Without the shift key, you would be creating an ellipse instead. So here I created a circle of 10 times 10 pixels. And by moving the circle left and right inside of the triangle, you can see that it automatically will snap to the center of the triangle graphic. This way you are sure that it is centered correctly. Now I will draw a rectangle on top of the circle. And I'd like to make the basis a bit more narrow than the top. We do that by first double clicking on the rectangle object. You see the corners turn from little squares to little circles. And now we can pull those circles to where we want. Now we align the square with the center of the triangle. And again, I'd like some rounded corners here on the rectangle. So I set the corner radius to two. All right, now I'm going to group both circle and square together. We do that by selecting both objects. Remember to hold down the shift key when you select them. And now we right click on the selection 
and we select Group Selection. Now let's rename this group to exclamation mark. And we're done with that. Our exclamation mark is still missing a color selection. I will first show you an easy way to pick an existing color, and then I will show you a very cool alternative. So to change the color of the exclamation mark, we first select it, and then under Selection Colors, we use the color picker right here. Now we click on the color of our button background, and there we go. Our exclamation mark has received the same color as our button background. Now there's a very cool alternative way to get the exclamation mark to take on the color of the background. And that is by subtracting the exclamation mark object from the triangle object. And we do that by first selecting both triangle and exclamation mark by drawing a selection square around them. And then we go here in a menu to Boolean groups and we select Subtract Selection. Now the top object, which is our exclamation mark, has been subtracted from the bottom object, our triangle. What this means is that the exclamation mark is displayed as transparent. So we can hover the triangle over any background and the exclamation mark will take over the color of that background. A very cool trick that I use a lot. Now let's just rename this group to Button Icon Alarm. And that's it for step two. In our final step, we are going to group the button background and the button icon into our final scalable button graphic. First, we align the icon both horizontally and vertically inside the button background. Again, use the red marker lines for snapping the icon object in place. And now we select both objects. We group them. And we change the name of the group to button alarm off 136 times 120 pixels. I always like to include the pixel size in the name because it makes it easier to work with the designs in the HMI application afterwards. Now that we have created our first alarm button, it's only going to be a matter of seconds to create the second one. I just need to select the button group, copy paste it using Ctrl C and Ctrl V, move it a bit to the side, and adapt the name of the group. We still need to change the color of the second triangle here, and I'd like to change it to a bluish color to indicate that the alarm screen is active. So to change the color of a selection of colors inside an object, we first select the object, and on the right side, under Selection Colors, we click on the color that we would like to change, and we change it to our preferred color. Okay, so let's do our second set of buttons now, our recipe buttons. First, I'll start by copying the design of the first alarm button. I'll ungroup this first. And I will remove the alarm icon here since we're not going to use that. So we're basically left with the button background. As you can see, the recipe icon consists of three layers of paper with four lines drawn on the first piece of paper and the edge of the paper has been folded. I know it looks a bit more complex, but it's actually not that difficult, you will see. We'll start by creating the front piece of paper, and we do that by first creating a rectangle on our page. Let's say 50 times 68 pixels. Now to create the folded flap, we're first going to transform the shape of the rectangle by double clicking on the object, and by pulling the bottom right corner a little bit to the left. Now we are going to create an extra corner on this polygon by hovering over the middle of the line here and by pulling the circle that appears towards where we'd like it to be. All right, that seems about right. I'm going to draw this flap here first, followed by the four lines. So I select the line tool right here and I draw it between the two corners of the flap. Now 
Now I double click on the line and I create a new point on the line by hovering over the middle of the line and by pulling it to where I want it to be. Now for the four lines on the paper, I simply keep using the line tool and I pull four lines. Holding down the shift key here will make sure that you are pulling perfect horizontal or vertical lines. Now for the final two lines, I just copy paste this line and I place them underneath. Just like that. Finally, I'm going to add a stroke, which is like an outline to the paper by selecting the object and adding a stroke right here on the right side. As well, let's round the corners of the paper like we did before with the alarm triangle. And finally, let's group all these individual objects together into one group, which we'll call recipe page. One thing we forgot here is to change the colors. So we select a complete group and we change the selection colors to the correct colors of our theme, which are white and a kind of bluish color. I'll just use the color picker again here. Okay, so that's the top page, the first page of our recipe icon. Now we just need to add page two and three underneath this page. Let's start by copying this design two times. And all we need to do now is simply put each paper on top of the other with a slight offset. Use the arrow keys on your keyboard for fine positioning. All right, now we group these three designs together. And we have our button icon recipe. One thing I'd like to change in this icon design is the thickness of the lines. So I do that by selecting the whole design and by changing the stroke size to two. Now I rearrange the different paper layers a bit. And there you go. To complete this button design, we just need to center this recipe icon on top of the background. Now we group both the icon and the background. And we call this design button recipe off 136 times 120 pixels. For the second recipe button, we start again by copying the first design. We change the color of the icon. And we adapt the name. There, it wasn't all that hard, right? And you know what's the best part of it? You can now just select a button and scale it to any size you like without loss of quality. Now that's the power of vector graphics right there. For our second example, we are first going to design a set of reset buttons and then we're going to design a second set of buttons for renaming a recipe. You can see the end result right here in the bottom right corner of the screen. Again, these buttons are taken straight out of my TIA Portal All Basics Pack Premium Training Bundle. So go and check out the link in the description below this video if you're serious about programming structured PLC and HMI applications in TIA Portal. We start with the reset buttons. Here we have a reset button for when the button is not pressed. This button has no color outline 
and a reset button for when the operator presses the button, indicated by a green outline. Similar to our first example, we are going to create these buttons using three steps. First we will create the background, then we'll design the button icon, and finally we're going to group our background and our icon together into our final button design. So we start with the background. I have chosen a background size of 100 times 100 pixels for these buttons. So we simply start by drawing a rectangle and changing the width and height to 100 times 100. You can see here in our example that these buttons have rounded edges. So let's take care of that now. To add a roundness to the edges of any shape here in Figma, simply select the shape first and change the corner radius right here. Let's use a corner radius of 8. If you'd like to change the corner radius of each corner individually, just double click the rectangle first, select the corner you'd like to change, this one on the left here for example, and enter a value for the corner radius. Let's make this one 20 for example. To undo our changes, simply press Ctrl Z. To finish the design of this rectangle, we select a fill color. And we rename this rectangle to Button Background. Now for the second step, the reset icon. The reset icon consists of a circle and two small arrows. Let's start with the circle. So we select the ellipse tool right here and we draw a circle. We only want an outline for our circle, not a filled circle. So we add a stroke right here with a thickness of six. And we remove the fill. Now we change the color of the stroke. And we resize our circle to 70 times 70 pixels. Now for the arrows, the triangles. We start by drawing a triangle using the polygon tool. And we add a corner radius of 3. Now we resize it a bit. And we change the color using our color picker. Now if we move the triangle on top of our circle outline, you see that we are kind of missing an outline on our triangle. So we add that by selecting a stroke for the triangle. Let's use a thickness of 1.5. And by selecting the same color for the stroke as the color of our background. Now let's rotate this triangle a little bit by getting close to one of the corners until the rotation icon appears. And we rotate it a little bit like this. We place it correctly on our circle. And we copy the triangle. And we put the second triangle in the right position like this. Again you can use the keyboard arrows for fine-tuning the position. Finally we're going to group the circle and the two arrows together by drawing a selection around them and by selecting group selection. And let's rename this group to button icon reset. For the final step of this design, we are going to group the background and the icon together. So first we center the icon on top of the background, and we group background and icon together. Let's call this design button reset faults of 100 times 100 pixels. So that's it for the first reset button. Now for the second reset button with the green outline, which means the operator presses the button, 
We start by copying the first reset button. The only change we need here is a green outline of the background. So we select the background and we add a stroke with a thickness of 5. Finally, we are going to change the color of the stroke. So you can either just go and select the color by pressing the stroke color and selecting your own color right here. Or alternatively, you can use the color picker and select the color already present on the screen. We are just going to enter the code directly right here. All right, we've got our green outline. Finally, let's rename this button design to button reset faults on 100 times 100 pixels. Okay, reset buttons are done. Let's move on to our second set of buttons, the rename recipe buttons. For these recipe buttons, we are going to create three designs. One button without any color outlining for when the button is not pressed. A second button with a green outline for when the button has been pressed and the function controlled by the button is active. And finally, a third button with a red outline for when the desired action by pressing the button has faulted. So three designs. Let's start with the first one. Again, we start first by copying one of our existing reset buttons. And we move that a little bit lower, right here. We are going to create a new icon for this button. So let's ungroup this design. And let's remove the existing reset icon. So we're just left with the background. Now we're going to create the icon for this button. As you can see from our example here, our icon consists of a pen and a line which is drawn underneath the pen. So this icon is used for renaming a recipe, hence the pen and the drawing line. Let's start with the pen. We will start by drawing this pen in a vertical position and when we're finished with the pen design we will simply change the angle, we will turn the pen to give it that inclined look. So our pen here consists of three parts, two rectangles and one triangle. So we draw two rectangles first, the larger rectangle of the two I'm changing to 10 times 52 pixels, and the small rectangle I'm resizing to 10 by 4 pixels. Now I'm just going to zoom in here so I can have a better view, and I will place the small rectangle on top of the big one. With a small gap in between. Next up is our triangle. So I'll draw that right here. And I will resize it to 12 times 12 pixels. And this triangle we put below our large rectangle, again with a small gap in between. Now for the line below the pen, I'll use a rectangle tool because that scales easier than a line tool. So I select the rectangle tool, I draw a rectangle, and I resize it to 62 times 2 pixels. Now for the final part of this design, we need to change the angle of the pen and we need to place it nicely on top of the line. The easiest way to change the angle of a group of objects is by first selecting the whole group and then navigating with your mouse cursor to any corner of the group until the cursor icon changes to a turning icon, just like that. Now simply hold the left mouse button and you can easily change the angle of the group. So we leave it right there. And now we move the pen a little bit so it fits nicely on top of our line. Awesome. Now we group the pen and the line together. And let's call this design Button Icon Recipe Rename. 
To finalize this design, let's change the corner radius of all objects in this design to 1. And let's use the same color for this icon as the reset icon. The fastest way to do this, as you might remember, is by selecting the complete group and changing the selection colors by using the color picker. For the final step of this design, let's group the background and the icon together by first centering the icon on top of the background and by grouping both objects together. And let's call this design button recipe rename of 100 times 100 pixels. For the second and the third button with the green and red outlines, we start by copying the first button two times. Let's quickly rename these two designs. So button recipe rename on 100 times 100 pixels and button recipe rename fault 100 times 100 pixels. Just as we did before with the reset button, we are going to create the green and red outline color by adding a stroke to the background object. So we select the background and we add an inside stroke with a thickness of 5. For the color of the stroke, let's use our color picker to select the same green color used in the reset button design. Now we do the same for our third button. So we first add the stroke to the background. And for the color, Let's use this hex code right here. So this is a more toned down red. I don't really like HMIs with very bright colors like bright green, bright red, etc. I prefer the colors to be a bit softer. I just think it looks better on HMIs. All right, so we are done with our second set of buttons and that concludes our second example with the reset button and the recipe rename button. Now the whole idea of creating these custom buttons in Figma is of course to use them in your HMI applications. So how do we get them out of Figma? You got it, we're going to need to export them. Luckily Figma makes it very easy and intuitive to export designs. You simply select all designs and here on the right you open up the export option. Now there's a couple of options here. First off, you can select in which size you want to export your designs. 99% of the time I export in the same size, so 1x, but you can as well choose to export them twice as big, 2x, or four times as big, 4x. Let's just leave this at 1x. Secondly, you can select in which format you would like to export. I would recommend to use the PNG format because it allows for transparency in your graphics. If you look at the designs of our reset and recipe rename buttons right here, then you'll notice that they have rounded edges. We would like the cutoff part of those edges to be transparent when we export those designs. And for this, you'll need to export in PNG format. So now we're ready to export. So we press right here, export nine layers. It will ask you which folder you'd like to save your designs to. So you choose your folder and then you simply click save. And that's really all there is to it. Now your designs are exported and they are ready to be imported to your preferred HMI software of choice. So there you go. I hope this tutorial has somehow given you a better understanding of the awesome features available in Figma and how they allow you to create custom, crisp and modern looking graphics for your HMI applications. I really love designing custom graphics and lifting my HMI applications from a mediocre, bland looking experience to a professional, modern looking standard. As I mentioned before, I always put a lot of importance on being a structured and organized PLC programmer. 
And if you'd like to get a taste of how structured PLC programming can look like in TIA Portal, then go and download my free guide by clicking on the link in the description below this video. I hope you enjoyed this Figma tutorial and as always, if you like this type of content and would like to see more of it in the future, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Bye for now. Thank you.